So you've got some data and you want to bring it into Excel so you can crunch the numbers a little bit. You might want to color code it, you might want to change the formatting, you might want to sort it, whatever the case may be. Sometimes you are lucky and you get to pull this data in from a program that imports nicely into Excel. Here I have a PDF and it won't import quite so nicely. This is data from a powerlifting competition done not too long ago. I'm going to copy it and if I paste it in it's tried to preserve the formatting it could, but it didn't succeed in containing it all within a proper table structure. It did preserve some fonts, some colors, some bold settings. I'm actually going to get rid of all that for starters. I want to do the formatting myself. So under this option here, Control, I'm going to choose Match Destination Formatting. Because this is a new document, there is no destination formatting. And so when I choose this, everything is just a plain font, plain color, and it's just plain text. Next, I need to convert it back into a column format. This is going to make it much more readable. The Data tab is a great tool for this, Text to Columns. In this case, my text is separated by spaces. And so if I choose this delimited option and tell it to separate based on spaces, you can see it spread out the data nicely into table format. Now it looks much more workable. The next step I'm going to do is on the Home tab, format the data as a table. This is where you want to be in Excel. Right now, I can put data anywhere all over this document, and I'll still be able to later, but this is sort of committing to Excel that this data is going to keep a consistent structure, and it's going to automatically do a lot of great things for me once I do this. Yes, the table does have headers at the top. It's automatically selected the whole range, which is great. Okay, now that this is done, Columns have been widened so I can read the entire heading. Color coding has been applied to make rows easier to follow. Every heading has its own drop down menu item where I can search and filter and sort my data. I'm in a really great place. So I'm going to do a couple other things here. First of all, I can see in my original document that they had some trouble with this one lifter. She failed all three of her bench presses and then seems to have dropped out in the deadlift and they've just got dashes, spaces, zeros. They couldn't decide what to do with that data. Um, I'm actually just going to get rid of Sarah. Uh, if she's going to throw off my results quite a bit if she's kind of an outlier. So we'll just get rid of her. Now I've got a problem. When I separated this data into columns, there were spaces between the first and last name and now it's got two columns for it and I don't really need two columns. Right now what this should actually say is first name and last name. And I'll double click this handle here so it widens and I can read the data. But this isn't what I want. I'm going to insert a new column and we're going to do a calculated value to bring this name back together into one column. When you do a calculation you start with the equal sign and now we're going to say that this equals the first name. And now when you're adding numbers, you use a plus sign. When you're combining text, when you're adding text together, use the ampersand. I'm going to use shift and seven gets you the ampersand. And then last name, first name and last name. Now if I hit enter here, it's going to automatically fill in for the whole table. Another advantage of using that format as table. But there's a problem. I don't have a space between the first name and last name. So I need to fix that. So back here where I had the first name and, and you'll notice normally when you're typing, you're not literally typing text in, you're typing the names of your columns, you're typing special characters that say to add things, equal signs, the names of formula functions. If you literally want text, to come into a calculated cell, you have to wrap it in quotation marks, double quotation marks. So I'm going to say quotation marks, space, and quotation marks, and then another ampersand, first name and a space and last name. And if I hit enter here, it recalculates automatically, and this is what I want to see. So now I want to get rid of my first name and last name. But the problem is, these are calculations based on the first name and last name, and if I delete these columns now, the reference is broken and the values are gone. So I'm going to undo that and before I delete those columns I need to copy my data here and back on the home tab I can paste values. 
paste values means that instead of pasting a calculation, which is recalculated all the time, it just takes the result at that instant. So now this literally just has the value Emily Duncan rather than a calculation. And I can delete these columns now without losing any data. I'll resize that. Great. I'm also going to get rid of this weight class column. Uh, it confuses things a little bit because it's not actually a number. 84 is a number, but the 84 and up category, 84 plus, that's not a number. And I could play with it. I could format it to the right to look like a number, except that heading which I want on the left. But it's going to throw off some of my color coding I plan to do later, and I don't really need it. I just want to know how people's body weight compares to the weight they lifted. So I'm going to get rid of this as well. So now I've got all my numbers, their body weight, the weight they attempted on their first, second, and third squat, first, second, and third bench press, deadlift, the total of their best lifts, and this Wilk score, which powerlifters use to try and give a fair score to somebody that takes into account their body weight so that lighter lifters don't need to lift as much to be as impressive. But this data is in kilograms, and my gym uses pounds. So if I want to see how the people I know compare to these people, I want to get it into pounds. And not only that, but there's these negative numbers. Back on the original document, you can see them color-coded in red. A negative number means that a certain weight was attempted but failed. They didn't succeed in doing that number. But this is going to be problematic for me. If I try and do math on these numbers, if I try and add these numbers, for example, to see what they lifted, I might end up with a negative number. It's going to make no sense. So I actually just want to drop those values, and I want to convert to pounds. The way I'm going to do this, I'm going to choose an empty cell on the same line with my first set of numbers. And then I'm going to do one of the most essential formulas in Excel. It's a logical function, the if statement. Lots of programming languages have something like this. It's extremely useful. The way it works, you take a value and calculate something based around it. So you either get a true or a false. And if it's true, it'll input one value. And if it's false, it'll input another value. So I'm going to say my test is whether the value is positive. If it's, if it's uh, greater than zero, if it's greater than zero, I want to use that value times 2.2, because that's how many pounds are in a kilogram. If it's not greater than zero, I actually want to put nothing in there. But what I'm actually going to do to make sure it shows up as nothing is those quotation marks I said, when you put in literal text, you use quotation marks with nothing in them. So it's going to either give me the number when it's greater than zero, converted into pounds, or it will give me no text at all. So far, so good. I've got the first value. And if I drag across, this was body weight. I'm going to do it for the first, second, and third squat, first, second, and third bench, first, second, and third deadlift. I could do it for the total as well, but I'm actually going to calculate the total myself later. Now I'm going to bring this down and calculate for all the people. And you can see now it's got holes where there used to be negative numbers. This is more what I want to see. Now again, I have the problem that these are calculations. And if I copy over these values, I will corrupt the data because they're dependent on these values. So once again, I'm going to highlight the data. I want to copy it. And then back on my home menu, I'm going to paste as values. So now I've just got my raw numbers. They're no longer calculations. And I can actually cut these and paste them over the data that was there. So I've got some useful numbers now. But they're a little bit daunting. I want to simplify this in a few ways. First of all, I want to get rid of the decimal places. I just estimated with 2.2 pounds per kilogram. I'm going to get rid of everything beyond the ones column. I'm going to right click after I've highlighted my data, choose format cells. And there's a number of things you can do here to change your formatting. I'm just going to go to basic number formatting and get rid of the decimal places. Now the numbers are looking a little bit more friendly. Now, I also want to get rid of some of the data I see here. I have squats one, two, and three. I don't really care how the meat went for these people. I just want to know what the maximum they accomplished was. So I'm going to insert a new column just called squat, where I calculate the maximum value. Now you can use the formulas tab to pull up the correct calculation, but there's auto suggested values. And sometimes you can just guess with simple things like max. I happen to know it equals max, and it suggests as I go. And I'm going to highlight a range here. And this is going to give me the maximum value 
in that range. All functions formulas uh, use this same standard formatting of equals and then this value that you're, or this name of the function, and then parentheses with your data inside. So it's automatically calculated for everybody their maximum squat. I'm going to do the same thing for bench press. Bench equals max, and then inside parentheses, I'll list the data that it should use. Automatically calculates. Same thing with the deadlift. Okay, so now I've got their maximum lifts and I can calculate their totals now based on these maximum lifts. So this equals the squat plus the bench plus, and I can't actually click here because the formula's in the way, but one of the handy things about having that format as table, it's given me a name I can actually type in. So I've got a total here. It didn't overwrite the old values because those were already in place, whereas before it was filling in the blanks but I can force it to override, and now it has, and I've got new totals in pounds. The next thing I wanna do is color code these values. I'm gonna highlight body weight, and conditional formatting is a great way to visualize your data. You can use bars and graphs. I'm gonna use a color scale. We'll go from white to green. So this means the lightest lifters show up as white, the heaviest lifters show up as green, and I can visualize this really easily. I'm also going to compare all their squats. I'm going to compare all the bench presses, all the deadlifts, and then their total values, and their Wilkes score. You notice I do each of these separately because I do want the numbers only compared to other relevant numbers. I don't want to compare somebody's body rate to their score. That's not a relevant uh, statistic. With this color coding, I can make a lot more sense of my data. I can see that a very light lifter with moderately green lifts is actually somebody who's quite impressive. I can see that the heaviest lifter at 257 pounds isn't just fat, they're actually quite strong. They have most of the biggest lifts in the whole competition. I can see that Cynthia here from Prince Rupert, not very far from me, she's done very well for herself with one of the stronger Wilkes scores. I'm gonna simplify this a little bit more. I'm gonna hide all the squats and just leave the maximum. Same with the bench press, same with the deadlift. So now I've just got their maximum lifts and this data is starting to get very easy to consume for me. If I want, I can use these tabs to sort, let's say sort largest to smallest by their score. And there we go, we can see the lightest and heaviest lifters were actually the most impressive in the entire competition. I can filter my data. Let's say I wanna see just people that are between 160 and 200 pounds. Two people with the same body weight in this case. So I've taken my data, I've converted it into new formats, I've filtered it, I've sorted it, I've color coded it, and I'm in a really good place to make sense of what's in front of me. I'm very happy with this, and I hope you are too.